let that smell, just close your eyes. And you see her, that Linda right now, she is smiling on us. And I believe she said, you know, I've been sheltered in long enough. And I think she went on and said, I'm going to go on and shelter at home with God. So praise be to God for what he has Amen. formed this day. And ain't nothing like hiding and sheltering and sheltering in the tabernacle because the body, the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be presence with the Lord. I can't think of a greater place today than to be sheltered in the presence of the Lord. So we thank God. And yes, we're going to mourn. And yes, we're supposed to cry. But those tears that we cry, oh, by and by, God is going to bring healing. So can we have a word of prayer? Father, as we come to you on this day that you have laid at rest your beautiful daughter, good God of Zion, you are the author and the finisher of our faith. It is to you, O oh God, that we behold the glory that you had already prepared. Because your word of God says that those you called, you foreknew, and you already predestined. So this is the day, God, that you have predestined for her life to return back unto you, God. And Lord, we pray, oh God, because you left your comforter, the Holy Spirit, let your spirit begin to reign in this place today, God. Let your angels warm us right now, God. Let them bring comfort to the lost, to the one who has departed, to the one who is not with us. But you send your comforter today, God to bring comfort and healing to our mind, to our body, and to our spirit, God. Lord, we thank you, God, in advance for the days to come, for those who will hear your voice, God, because we too, oh God, will be called, and it'll be our day, God. But until you call us, God, comfort us, God, strengthen us, God, Heal us, God. Heal us in your word. Heal us in your song. Father, we pray it right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We have a sister here with us today. Wants to come and share the minister reading. If, do you want to share the minister reading? The scripture reading? She's going to come. I think she helped us with the program. So she's going to come and read the scripture for us. All right. Is that all right with everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes. I'll be doing that for a second. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Going to come on up. Hello and praise the Lord family. Um, our scripture reading is coming from Psalm 23rd chapter. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I just want to say to the family, that God is our comfort. We've been here not too, just a few months ago, but you know what? God is still in control. And he knows our heaviness today. He knows our hearts.
the hearts of the husband, the heart of the children, the heart of the sisters. God already knows. And so my, my prayer today is that God just give us all peace in the loss of a loved one. I'm going to go ahead and um, sing a selection. Um, <clears throat> Um, I don't know about tomorrow. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. says you say hold on to God's unchanging hand yeah. you hold on to God's unchanging hand yeah. and know that God is going to be with you always so we go through our uh, service this morning it requires us to do a silent reading uh, of the obituary <laughs> There's a time and a season. Mm -hmm. 
Ecclesiastes teach us that there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. There's a time to laugh and there's a time to cry. There's a time to mourn. There's a time to weep. But none of this is unknown to God in the season that we live in. I want to read back at the passage that was read earlier, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. That is good news right now. Because aren't we living in a time right now <clears throat> Excuse me, that we need a shepherd? Amen. A shepherd that watches over us day and night? Mm -hmm. Truly he is our shepherd. And the word says that because he is our shepherd, we are the sheep of the pasture. Mm -hmm. So the shepherd always watches over his sheep. Here lies one of God's sheep, but she was a servant. She didn't mind serving God. That's what I love about her. And every time I talk to her, she has some type of word to share with me. I said, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be preaching to you, but she's preaching to me. Love, am I right about it? Uh-huh. She going to give you a word now. With what, whether you want to hear that word or not. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it ain't the word you want to hear. <laughs> well, she's going to give you one, right? Yes, and so that's because she was one of the shepherd's sheep. She understood what the shepherd required in her life. In order for her to reach this destination, she was a shepherd that humbled herself unto God. And she knew that one day, just like us, the shepherd's going to call us. And so when he calls us, in this text, that the psalm that was written by David, <clears throat> in my text it says, I lack nothing. That's good to, news to know. That I lack nothing when I have the shepherd in my life. Even when I'm sick and it doesn't feel like I feel good in my body, as long as I got the shepherd, I lack nothing. Even when it feel like that I'm running short on a few items, as long as I got the shepherd, I lack nothing. Yes, Lord. Because we know that our shepherd will provide a way out of no way. How many believe that? The text says that he makes me lie down in green pastures. That means that sometimes God calls us to rest. And I believe that that is the season that we're living in right now. He's called us and pulled us away from some things so that we could get some rest, so that he can renew us, renew our spirits, help us to get in contact with who we are and who he created us to be. Let these words comfort you. That our dear sister, she is in a resting place. And I promise you, she do not want to come back because she is resting, as they would say, she is safe in his arms. And there is no better resting place than being, to be resting in the arms of Jesus. Well, he hasn't called us yet, but he calls us today to know him as our shepherd yeah. and to rest in him today mm -hmm. to her children to her grandchildren I see she's got a host of them in here she's calling you to rest because you know what you're going to see her again when, when, when he's your shepherd and you're his sheep then what does he do think of a staff what does he do with that staff he takes the staff and he goes and he gathers the sheep Raise up, raise up your cane for a minute, uh, uh, Everett. Brother Everett, just raise it up in the air so they can see your cane. Yeah, yeah, shaft looks something like that. You see that little look on there? What he does when he, he goes get his sheep and he just pulls us on in. Mm -hmm. 
You can put it down. And so as a shepherd, because he cares about a sheep, she's already in her resting place. Now the shepherd, he wants us to make him even be greater in our lives, right? And so when we get into that resting space, then he's able to refresh our souls. I don't know about you, but being in this time of sheltering, isn't anybody here besides me that has really begins to get some stuff done? Yeah, anybody had a closet that you know you need to clean out? Mm -hmm. I talk to the ladies for a minute. Y'all know how we get all our clothes in that closet mm -hmm. and can't find nothing. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, went through your closet in these last five weeks. You say, I've been looking for that shirt. Am I right about it? Because what he does, he begins to refresh our soul. He brings to our remembrance, really, we're really blessed people of God. Mm -hmm. We are so blessed. Yes. And God wants us to remind us that we are blessed people. Yes. And we lack nothing when we have the shepherd. Oh, I wish I could convince you today. Yes. Yes. See, when we make the Lord our shepherd, Everything that you see going on from, from in the national capital to, to what's going on in Louisville, Kentucky, God has all power over that. Amen. Do you understand? See, he will guide us along the right path. Yes. And he will, he will order our steps and tell us which way to go. And so when we have the, the shepherd as our guide, think of what do we call it? The um the GPS, right? The global positioning system. Well, our shepherd is like our GPS, God's positioning system. And so he wants to negate our life to go in the path that he wants it to go. And so he guides us, me along the right path, Path means he guides me in righteousness. Why does he does that? He does that for his name's sake. In other words, Jesus has put his name on us. He is a redeemer. He put his name on us. See, when, when, when all of us came from somebody, all of us came out of a mama, right? Everybody in here came out of a mama. Amen. So that means that <clears throat> we often use this this verse uh, that we were born in our mother's womb. So, so what that means is if I was born in my mother's womb, then everything that the shepherd had prepared for me to experience, I experienced that when I was in my mother's womb. Now he guides my feet to walk it out. And that's what we're doing. For his name's sake. So because he's my shepherd, he says, even though I'm going to walk through sometimes look like dark valleys right now, right now it looks a little dark. It looks a little glim because we can't see the light shining as clearly as it needs to shine. But he says, even when I'm in the valley, I am there with you. He said, even when it looks really dark, even when you, you probably looking at me right now like cuz, but you don't know what I'm feeling right now. Oh, I, I know what you're going through. Because, you know, death has hit my, my immediate family a couple of times, several times. Oh, I know what that darkness feels like. But what I want you to know that even in a dark place, his light can shine on your darkness. Yeah. His light will shine. See, the light of Christ can shine on your darkness today. He says, so, he says, and then he says, I will fear no evil. In other words, he wants us to have faith over fear. Mm -hmm. Faith, in Hebrew says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of those things that are unseen. So God is saying, I want you all to have faith over those things that you've been fearing, those things like evil. He said, because I will fear no evil. You will fear no evil. Why? He says, because you're with the shepherd. He said, your rod and your staff, 
They comfort me. So God is going to bring comfort. Not only today, but in the days ahead, God is going to bring more comfort to you people of God. And then he's, all, he's also going to prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> Wish I could help somebody there. He anoints my head with oil. And then my cup begins to overflow. Here's his promise. God has so many promises in the Bible. And his, and his promises are yea and amen. He says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. You know what we're looking at right now? Linda understood goodness and mercy. She understand that when the day that the shepherd called her, goodness and mercy is going to follow her all the days of her life. Amen. Even in her not so feel good moments, when I tried to go see her and pray for her the last time, and she's like, no, cuz, I'm just going to rest right now. She said, I'm just going to rest right now. I said, okay. I respect that. But I want you to know who she was resting for. I want you to know who she was getting prepared for. She was resting because she was getting prepared for her shepherd. Because she knew that goodness and mercy was going to follow her all the days of her life. So what does that mean? The last verse of this says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And that's what she's doing right now. Amen. She is going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, don't you want to be in the house of the Lord with her when he calls your name? So I ask you, when he calls you, what's going to be your answer? Because one day, he's going to call all of us. And we're going to have to answer that call. So right now, we're saying, yes, Lord. That's all he wants. He just wants a yes, Lord. And if we just continue to say yes to God, don't you know he'll take care of the rest? Oh, it, you know, sometimes when we preach the gospel, we make it so difficult. It's not that difficult. God just want a yes. And I believe you loved her so much. I know you love her. I know you love her, Everett. But you knew God needed her, right? I know you loved her sister. But you knew God called her. See, she didn't just leave because she wasn't feeling so well. She left because God knew she was ready. That's why he got her, because he was ready. She was ready to go. And so when they're ready to go, let them go on and go and be with the Lord. And one day God going to call us. And all he wants to know is, yes, are you going to be ready? And I believe you are. Yes, Lord, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready when you call my name. Because right now, until you call me. I'm going to make sure that I continue amen. to make you my shepherd. Amen. Can everybody say amen? amen? So we just want to, I know that there's going to be um, something else done, but we want to go ahead and, and um, sing a song. We want to sing another song and then we're going to close this up. And let me see if my brother can help me with this one. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He's the answer. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus.
today. And I think she would say this, I love him, I love him, I love him. Just let me go. He's the answer. Oh, I'm going to see you one day. I love him, I love him, I love him. Joy is going to come in the morning. I love him. He's, he's the answer. Oh, yes. He's the answer. Oh, he, he's the answer. Oh, my God. He's the answer today. Lord. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, will you continue to let your spirit reign, bring comfort to this family, God. Let the spirit of the living God reign on them in the days to come. May they grow, God, and may they comfort one another and stay close, God, close together closer than they've ever been to you before, God. That be my prayer today, God. As they grow and, and allow, the, allow Jesus to be the shepherd, God, that they grow closer into you. The spirits are sweet and the spirits are humble. I can, I can smell the fresh roar oil of your anointing that is going in the atmosphere right now. Just saying, baby, it is okay. It's going to be all right because God is on your side. Lord, we thank you. We thank you and we love you today, God. Let the peace of God and the sweetness of your understanding may it rest above them, God. And Lord, may we dedicate this body unto you that as she leaves earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, as you has returned your daughter unto you, as you receive her right now, in the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you.
Can we take the flower? Yes, okay. we sure can. You say it's hat? Oh, no. Is this it? Yeah. All right. Right. 